Hi guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. So in today's comparison video, we're gonna be looking at sharp and pointy things. We're looking at knives. So knives are an essential piece of kit for scuba divers, just in the unlikely event that you're tangled up in something or you need to cut someone out of something, it's always best to have a knife on you. Uh, you just kind of pray that you never actually need it. Um, but they do come in lots of different sort of styles and, uh, and kind of designs. And I've got two sort of very, um, very sort of polar different um, sort of cutting tools in front of me today. I've got the Aqualung Argonaut knife, which is more your traditional style of a, um, a big sort of handheld dive knife. And then we've got uh, a sort of a modern twist, which is a line cutter. Now these both have their sort of pros and cons, uh, but we're gonna be comparing and contrasting them just to see sort of which cutting tool is better for what type of diver. So let's jump straight in and look at the aesthetics. Okay, so when people very first started to dive, they sort of used tools that they had available. So they used a more traditional style knife, more like the Aqualung, um, with a basic handle and a sort of sharp cutting edge. And, um, and that was pretty much it, because they never really knew what they were gonna come across, so they needed a, a kind of a useful tool to cut through entanglements and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's very much what the Aqualung uh, is like the modern equivalent of. Um, the main benefit of this, because they've upgraded it through, um, through the years, is first of all, it's a single piece of, uh, of metal, and the metal is titanium, so the first thing you'll notice is how light it is. It's very, very light. Um, so you, you barely notice that you're actually holding on to anything. Um, it's got this black sort of PVD coating on it, which is very cool. Um, and uh, because it's titanium, of course, it can never rust. The, um, both the tip and the handle are very Spartan um, because they're very, uh, very simple. You just have some um, paracord just kind of wrapped around that to give you a handle. Um, decent amount of... Um, sort of stopping power on this section so you're not actually going to um, sort of risk getting your fingers onto the cutting edge and uh, and then on the hilt uh, you've got a little banging device so you can signal your buddy if you hit that on your tank I'm not a fan of that because you've got something sharp waving around behind your back um, but it's there if you need it to <coughs> looks and feels nice finish to it uh, very smart design um, because it's light and because it's a single piece of titanium, it just feels strong. Um, you've got that serrated cutting edge, which is gonna be the real selling point for this style of knife, uh, because these are really built to, um, to cut through thicker lines, uh, like sort of ropes and things, to, um, to get through obstacles. Comes with a sheath, very simple uh, sort of Kydex plastic sheath. Um, and you've got a couple different mounting options. You can either mount it onto a belt loop or it comes with these uh, sort of rubber leg straps. So you can strap it to a leg more like a traditional knife. And of course you've got all these little grommets around. Um, so you can sort of thread some bungee cords um, sort of around something. So overall kind of looks and feels, I like it. Um, as far as a kind of modern take on a classic dive knife, it's very smart. Um, it's definitely got that sort of military look down to it. Um, it's very strong, it's very secure. Um, there's no sort of complicated mechanisms to, uh, to release the knife, it's literally just pull. Um, I imagine that's gonna be a little tricky if that's on like a, um, a webbing belt loop. Trying to like pull that up might be a little bit awkward because it's quite a good pull to, uh, to be able to get it out. Obviously you don't want it to fall out, but, um, but that's a good tug to, um, to release that. Um, but yeah, no mechanisms, um, no springs that can go wrong, no locking mechanisms that'd be complicated or tricky to use with gloves. Uh, so overall, I do like the kind of looks and feels of it. Um, practically, it's a very tough and strong knife. Uh, so let's look at the almost polar opposite to it. And this is the Easy Cuts Trilobite. So this is a line cutter. This is what a lot more sort of modern scuba divers are using because it's, especially for recreational diving, it's unlikely that you have to cut through anything thicker than maybe one or two mil thick. 
Um, there aren't a great deal of um, sort of big chunky ropes knocking around that we routinely cut through. It's usually fishing line or maybe someone's a webbing that we need to cut through in an emergency. So this is where these sort of line cutters are really sort of shining through and a lot more um, sort of modern recreational and even technical divers are having at least sort of one of these on their person because they're safe. Um, it's very easy to um, cover up that blade but still make it accessible to smaller things so you're not going to cut yourself you're not going to damage your own equipment um, looks and feels to it it's very simple um, comes in a few different colors i just chose black because uh, it's simple um, the construction is well made all the sort of stitching is nicely done um, it's lightweight as well uh, the only thing is that it's got a, uh, a stainless steel razor blade kind of built into that you can replace them it does come with some spares um, but I'm not a huge fan of stainless steel uh, or any kind of steel in the water just because if you don't look after it, if you forget to wash it and dry it thoroughly, then rust is gonna form on that um, quite quickly. The, um, the harness pouch, uh, you've got a couple of different options on these. I think this is the uh, sort of the wrist mount. Um, so that's designed to go sort of on a wrist strap on, uh, on your dive computer or a compass or whatever. And um, yeah, no, uh, no tricky mechanisms. You just pop it away and then the Velcro just holds it in position and that's it. So um, yeah, the general aesthetics, I do like them both. They're, they're similar tools, but at the same time, they're very, very different tools. So whilst the line cutter is super efficient at cutting through small things like fishing line and, uh, and sort of webbing, if you had to cut through something thick like a rope for whatever reason, you couldn't. Um, whereas the, uh, the Argonauts, you could cut through those fishing lines, you could also cut through that thick stuff, um, but it's that much more sort of bigger and cumbersome. So, um, so then we're just gonna take a quick look at the different materials, um, compare and contrast them, and then look at the different uses that these knives are for. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the specifications. So the technicals are nitty gritty. There's not a great deal for these because yeah, they are knives. Um, so the, um, the Argonaut, so this is made out of four mil thick titanium uh, and this has got an EDP coating. Uh, it's not PVD, sorry. Um, this is that sort of black coating which gives it a kind of matte black finish. Uh, five mil paracord um, that goes through and becomes a, a decent side lanyard as well. Um, you can remove that and it's almost worth removing it. I'm going to do it um, for the next section because there is some hidden stuff underneath here uh, which also sort of adds to the uh, useful, uh, usefulness of this knife. Um, Kydex sheath, uh, a very tough plastic, um, and that's like sort of thermo wrapped around the knife when it's um, sort of being constructed. Um, it's a very strong water resistant and everything. The, uh, the easy cut, so this has a 420 stainless steel blade. Um, they are replaceable um, because yeah, even if it's stainless steel, 420 is good sort of marine resistant, but still, if you don't wash and clean that, it is gonna rust over time, so you do have to keep it clean, uh, sort of in between dives. Um, other than that, we're down to the price, so the Trilobites, the Easy Cut, so this is $31.95, uh, sort of recommended retail at the moment. Um, so that's a relatively inexpensive um, sort of cutting tool, but why wouldn't it be? It's just a single razor blade and a sort of plastic sheath with a few um, little uh, sort of bits of webbing. The, uh, the Aqualung Argonaut, so this um, has a recommended retail price of £130. So um, they're in two very different leagues and that's mainly down to this is a solid section of four mil thick titanium um, that they put a lot of attention and sort of laser etching and whatnot into it. Um, so yeah, they're very two sort of, um, they kind of do the same thing but in two very different ways. Um, so as far as like specs wise, the, the most efficient is the, uh, is the Argonaut. It's got all the kind of bells and whistles. It's very, very fancy. Um, but then if you want the more sort of inexpensive, the simpler knife than the, the easy cut is the way that a lot more divers are going towards nowadays. Um, but I do have something to cut with them. Um, so let's see what they'll do when um, sort of faced against a bit of rope. <laughs> 
Okay, so I do have a section of rope with me right now, and uh, this is quite chunky rope. This is about six mil thick, um, and obviously the Argonaut's gonna do it. We're gonna find out if the trilobite can do it, because it can cut through some quite thick stuff. Um, let's take a look. So um, we've got two different cutting edges on the Argonaut. Um, first of all, I'm gonna try it with the straight cutting edge. Um, so that does that with a kind of single uh, sort of motion. Uh, I imagine it'll also do that with the uh, with the serrated just as fast. Um, but the real test is really meant for the uh, the trilobite because you have a limited amount of space to uh, sort of get anything in that. Are we going to get something this thick through? And um, the uh, the answer is yes. And that was actually a much smoother action because you have a razor blade inside of that. It's that much faster to uh, to cut through. Um, that was incredibly sort of smooth. And um, I'm doing it with a very small, yeah, that's really, really easy. Um, and yeah, that's a decent section of rope as well. Obviously, if you have um, some real big sort of chunky rope, then uh, you'd have to go more down this route because you'd need that uh, sort of saw cutting serrated edge um, to get through. If you can't get any section of the, um, of the rope to get through that, then you have no chance of getting through it. But to be honest, I've never come across anything much thicker than that that I'd need to cut through whilst in the water. Um, obviously, if you need to sharpen a pencil, um, that's something else that I use my dive knife for. Um, you'd need more of a traditional blade because you couldn't really sharpen a pencil with an easy cut and I wouldn't recommend it because you could damage that blade. Um, but yeah, they're both quite smart. So my main thing is, is that this is big. And um, granted, it does come in a blunt tip, um, which I'd probably prefer over this kind of pointed tip because um, I've never really come across a scenario where I need a point to um, whilst I'm in the water. I've never come across a situation where I've needed to puncture something um, or sort of cut anything with a, a tiny little point. Um, and I have come across a situation where I have just dotted myself um, with the point of the knife. So pointed tip are a little bit old hat for me. Granted, they look cool. Um, they've got that kind of aesthetic value to you. But I think in this sort of modern age, we're a bit more practical where actually a blunt tip is a bit more practical, especially when you're trying to like stow it away so that out of sight, um, you're less likely to damage yourself or your equipment um, if you've got a blunted tip. If you're, one of the main questions or one of the main comments that I often see on um, sort of comment sections around knives is the sort of commercial divers, they all sort of jump in and they say, oh, well, we just use like a bread knife or something like that, which is great. If you're cutting through sort of foul props or whatnot, then yeah, great. But these are recreational knives where scuba divers, we're coming across fishing line, a bit of netting, maybe a bit of seaweed or something. So you don't need anything too sort of hefty because it's just a little bit excessive. So, um, so when I go down the kind of the line cutter routes, um, I tend to have at least two on me at any given time. Uh, sort of one on a belt and then uh, sort of one closer to a hand just so that you can always reach it. Um, and that way you can have like the best of both worlds. Uh, I know that's a bit of a cheat answer, um, but if I were to go in the water uh, sort of recreationally, um, just a normal sort of chilled out dive, uh, I take the trilobite over the uh, over the Argonaut. Um, if I was planning a dive to um, to free a bunch of netting, a bunch of ghost gear or something, then yeah, I'd probably lean down towards the uh, the Argonaut. Um, probably the Argonaut over any other um, sort of stainless steel knives or whatnot because it's titanium and all that. Um, actually, one thing I mentioned in the last section that I didn't do for you, I'm afraid, is um, underneath this. Um, this paracord, if you unravel all of that, they've um, they've cut in a bunch of hex um, sort of sections. So you can use it as a bit of a wrench. Uh, I probably wouldn't, to be honest, because the only real section to get any kind of leverage is that, and you're not gonna be grabbing onto that, are you? Um, and I always just keep a bunch of spanners uh, in my toolbox when I'm diving. So it is a good emergency if you need to, um, because they're not sort of crow's feet or anything, they're not too useful on hoses, um, but hey, it's a little extra feature for you. 
So actually, to be honest, to um, whittle it all down, um, yeah, for a normal recreational, uh, even a technical dive, I'd have at least one of these on me um, at any given time. For more um, sort of tough work, if I'm cutting through something a bit more substantial, then I'd lean towards the Argonaut. But overall, I'm still leaning with the, uh, the line cutter. It's the way most people are going these days. It's smaller, it's neater. Um, the only caveat I do have is that, yeah, you do have to keep that clean and, uh, and keep it dry in between dives, especially if you're diving in salt water. The salt water and steel are just going to create rust. And granted, you can change those blades, um, but why bother if you can just take it out and dry it in between dives? But what do you guys think? Uh, I know a lot of different line cutters. They're coming with um, sort of titanium blades now. Um, they're also coming with ceramic blades. Uh, what do you guys think about those? Um, do you go down the sort of the big route? Are you a uh, sort of more traditional dive knife um, uh, with a sort of whole handle and all that kind of stuff? Uh, what about mechanisms and whatnot? Do you prefer like an actual sort of thumb lock mechanism or more this kind of thermoform sheath that uh, just sort of holds it in naturally and you just have to give it a decent tug. What do you guys reckon? Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then of course, give me some other options. Um, I never really know what to compare. I just grab a few things off the shelf and, uh, and see what I can make out of a video. But if you want me to compare two things, let me know if you've got something that you want us to compare, by all means, send it over and I'll, uh, I'll take a look. Uh, and obviously, if you don't have any stuff, but you do want to see more, then hit that like and subscribe button so you can see more of our videos on your YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and say dive. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.